Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Public Affairs uh, Committee. Uh, of course, they were saving the best for last. And thank you for being here this after, uh, this morning still. So. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you being here. And um, before we get into my comments and some public comments, I'd just like the committee to introduce themselves. Um, Bob Lamb, board member. I'm Pastor Herrera, chair of the Public Affairs Committee. Uh, Rick Lopes, the chief of public affairs. Board member. Thank you. And could I introduce the other members here? Uh, Kurt Hepler, Senior Staff Counsel. Cindy Christensen, Chief Deputy Registrar. Steve Sands, Registrar, slowly fading away. <laughs> the best for last, right? That's what I said. Okay. Well, I, I uh, wanted to uh, just um, make a couple of short comments before we get into the agenda. And uh, let me just pull up my notes here. And we have two excused absences. One is Nancy S Stringer, and the other one is Ed Lang, uh, that uh, are both out of town and could not be here for today. Um, <clears throat> we have a short agenda, but uh, I think a, a pretty uh, important agenda. Uh, we, we are going to have an update from Beric on the Public Affairs Committee. Uh, we are going to be reviewing with the board so that we can make a full recommendation to the board on a communications plan for 2014 through 2017. Uh, we will also see if there's any additional comments for the Sunset Review Report which I think we've already discussed quite a bit. And uh, Rick, I mean, Rick is going to be demonstrating a new website for us so that we can see how that's coming along. Um, I wanted to know if there's any public comment at this point from anyone present. Seeing and hearing none, we will proceed. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome Amber Foreman, who is the new graphic artist for public affairs and the Contractor State License Board. And uh, I welcome you, Amber, and also on behalf of the committee and also of the Contractor State License Board. And maybe you could come up and just give us a little briefing, very short, nothing uh, too, uh, too much it's about your education and your background and, uh, and uh, just uh, shortly. Okay, hi, I'm, hi. I'm Amber Foreman. Hi, everyone. I am um, new to CSLB. Um, prior to um, coming to here, I worked for uh, Kasumas River College as a graphic designer for about seven years. And prior to that, I actually started out working for the state of California for as a student assistant for about five years. So I did went to Sac State, got my education, and got my degree in graphic design, and um, was working for the state um, for the, I think it's Cal Recycle now, back then it was um, integrated waste management board. So um, I worked in the public affairs office as well um, as a graphic student graphic designer um, prior to that. So great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'm sure you're going to do a great job for us. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. You take care. You thank you. There you go. Um, just a couple of other uh, opening comments here. Um, and one of the areas that the public affairs uh, unit has been working on is the whole thing about the drought and uh, uh, also well drillers. Uh, last, at our last board meeting, there was a, a gentleman who had come to present uh, the issue of uh, licenses, expediting licenses for well drillers. And, uh, and of course, you know, there is the drought situation. Uh, the public affairs staff has been, we've been working closely with the governor's office of emergency services and office of planning and research uh, to kind of deal with that issue and really kind of create some outreach uh, materials uh, because of this dire situation that California currently uh, is experiencing. Uh, of course, uh, you know, just some facts here about uh, well drillers. Uh, there's only 774 active licenses, uh, and uh, many uh, licensees that have other licenses are also 
uh, adding the well drilling light classification to their license because of the real need at this point in time. Uh, I just hope that it doesn't dry up the state with the groundwater down the road, but <laughs> you know, I'm sure that the governor's office is going to be monitoring that with their overall plan on the drought. Um, and also we want to thank the licensing division for really expediting and looking at uh, the need here for the licensees and uh, making some real good progress in that area. Just a comment on uh, three press events that happened uh, from the time of the uh, last board meeting. Uh, Rick and his staff had uh, two press events uh, basically dealing with the uh, devastating wildfires not only in San Diego County but also in uh, El Dorado and Amador County here in California. Uh, very briefly, uh, the Public Affairs Division has also been working with David and his uh, predatory services and repair scams uh, uh, task force. Uh, they're working together and, and really getting some uh, public affairs and trying to inform the public about the efforts that the Contractors State License Board is making in this initiative. Uh, thanks to Jane, who has been doing a lot of work with the uh, senior scam stoppers uh, during this last two months. Over 24 smarter, I'm sorry, senior scam stoppers have really taken place, uh, both in Northern California and Southern California. Uh, we're very proud of that, and it's really, really been a very, very successful program, uh, and uh, uh, that I think is, is really, has given uh, a lot of good name to the Contractor State License Board. Uh, we're gonna talk about the communications plan and the committee will be taking some action on that. And uh, also uh, the social media update, uh, I guess the new toy is Flickr. And uh, you're going to be uh, telling us a little bit about what you're doing in that area. And uh, also Rick will give us an update on the strategic plan and some of the objectives that we identified at our, at our strategic planning session. So take it away, Rick, and we'll take it from there. Do you have any comments, by the way, uh, board uh, committee members at this point? Okay. Okay, then we'll go ahead and start on, on agenda item C, which is the program update. Uh, as Pastor mentioned, as far as staffing is, we, we have hired our new graphic designer. We have one current opening, which is a part-time vacancy for a student assistant. We have made an offer, or we're about to make an offer on that. We're just looking for the final approvals from the department before we can do that. So we expect to have that position filled within the next week or two. Um, we, the, going down on page one here, the website redesign project, we'll talk in more depth later, so I'll skip over that for now. The Flickr is the newest addition to our so social media package. This is a, a photo sharing website that we were able to uh, especially utilize for our media outreach. We're able to post our pictures to that, and then when the media goes to that, the, the nicest thing about that that makes it easy for them is they can choose the resolution uh, that they want to download it. Sometimes they'll want smaller resolutions for a website. If they want something maybe you know, for actual print in a newspaper, they might want a higher one, or maybe on the website they want to do some options. So they've got some options there. It's no cost to us to do it, so we're now able to do it with Flickr. The great thing about that, when you combine it with uh, the Google Drive that we utilize, as well as YouTube and, and our other things. We've got a lot of resources that are available to the media when we do outreach. Um, we actually now a number of times, including last week, uh, we did a TV interview. In the past, technology, when you were gonna do an interview with somebody in a different city, um, especially Los Angeles where we did one last week, you have to usually do an interview on TV by satellite. And that would mean you'd have to go to some facility that has a satellite uplink, which can send a signal to a satellite. You have to pay an outside company, Five minutes of time, you know, can cost a couple hundred dollars for satellite time. Then on the other end, they have to have a, a receiver to download that off a of satellite, and that's how they, you would get video. So whenever you see reports on the news from other places in the world, for many you know, years, it was only done by satellite communications. Now with the internet, what we're able to do is we're able to actually do the interview here in Sacramento, 
do it over the telephone so they can ask their questions, get their information. We'll shoot it with a, one of the cameras, what you see here, that we're using for this web stream. And then we're able to take that video file and upload it at no cost to us, at no cost to the station. They can download the file and it looks just like they were actually here doing the interview. So we've done that a number of times. This past week, we used somebody from Swift, a Spanish speaker here in Sacramento that did an interview with the Telemundo station in Los Angeles. So we were able to you know, provide some outreach at, at no cost you know, to us, no cost to the station, and it, and it worked out really well. So it's just an example of how we're able to use, utilize that technology. On page two, you can see uh, some of the other social media things. Our, our likes and followers continue to grow on Facebook and Twitter uh, onto page three. Um, as far as our d video and digital services, as we've talked in past board meetings, with the new equipment we purchased, we expected to be doing a lot more video, and, and we're actually starting to see that play out. On page three, you can see it, uh, a town hall meeting we did on the predatory service and repair. We actually videotaped segments of that, created a video which is on our YouTube page. And as you saw at the end of the enforcement meeting, we're using this video now to, um, to, to shoot enforcement operations uh, above and beyond what we've ever been able to do. And so you're gonna be able to you know, see that really play out as we do media outreach down the road. We've also shot, as you see at the bottom of page three, an instruction video you know, just internal for our staff. We have a, a new software to submit health tickets for people having problems with their computers. Um, so we produced a video kind of showing them how to, to work through the system. On page four, the email alerts continue a slow but steady growth. So you see those numbers there. On page five, the updates on our, our media relations. Um, you know, the media calls that we get as well as the press releases that we've issued since our last board meeting. And as Pastor mentioned in his comments towards the bottom of page five and onto page six, we did a total of three media events. Two of them had to do with wildfires. And the other one you see at the top of page six was the Summer California Blitz. Uh, one of the interesting things about that, and, and it it's shows how PAO and it works really closely with SWIFT and everybody in enforcement, but they had somebody they specifically wanted to target, this so-called uh, sweetheart swindler that you see some information on page six. So they brought that to our attention. We worked with them to have that sting as the one we were doing video at and worked behind the scenes with them and made that kind of the, um, the starring part of our uh, press event that we did, the arrest of this woman who uh, had some other problems with taking advantage of seniors in the Bay Area the year before. And then on page seven, you see the industry bulletins and some of our publication information. On page eight, uh, our Senior Scam Stopper recap. And as Pastor mentioned, we've done 24 Senior Scam Stoppers since the June board meeting. Right now, we've got at least 27 more. It seems like every day, Jane's adding one or two on, onto the list. You can see last week we did three, the week before we did three, next week we're doing four. So Jane is racking up the frequent flyer miles. Uh, as you can see though, we're really happy about the fact is we're starting, I think we have a real good split between how many are done in Northern California and Southern and even in some in Central California. But for a long time, it, we were doing a lot more, it seemed in Southern California. So we've made a real effort on making sure we're spreading ourselves here around the Northern part of the state as well. And on page nine, as far as our employee relations, we do uh, oversee the intranet site, which is used by our 400 staff members around the state. We do have an uh, employee only site. Uh, which we keep updated. And on page 10, we wanted to go ahead and update you. These are the strategic plan items that the board passed at the April board meeting. And I wanted to kind of you know, give you an update. You see the status is in the right column and the target dates. You'll note that item two and three, we've come up with a couple of target dates and we're, since Amber's new, we're gonna completely blame it on her. These are two consumer publications that we've had to push back um, and actually, she's, she's going to be the one bringing relief to us. They've been delayed because we were waiting for a graphic designer to get on board. And now that Amber's here uh, and getting her feet wet, we're hoping to be able to uh, spend time uh, in the next few weeks really pushing our consumer publication together and hope to have that completed by November. Uh, we may have to slide that back a little bit, but right now we're going to hold with that. And once we're done with that, we can then work towards completing the contractor publication, which we hope to have done by early spring. So items one through nine are items off the strategic plan portion. And if you look on page 11, actually not, that should not be, actually I think number eight is right. That was something off the enforcement uh, committee's objectives that they're partnering with us. So public affairs does have a role. So I wanted to report to the board. It's kind of an ongoing thing. Uh, we heard about some of the, the efforts that are underway with the energy commission. Public affairs does play a part in that and we will be doing you know, outreach 
with that as well as our, with our predatory service and repairs. And then happy to answer any questions. Questions? Joan? Uh, any public uh, comments or questions for the public? Okay. Just one quick comment. We're really not going to hold you responsible. Don't want you to get all worked up nervous for the first day. Uh, Rick, just uh, on the strategic plan, the E was essential or was it imminent for the uh, strategic plan? Remember the initial at the end? Was that? Yeah, the E was essential. The B was beneficial. Beneficial, yeah. Okay. I think there was one other, but I don't think we have no, I, importance. I, importance? Okay. We didn't have any in our plan anyway. That's correct. Yeah. Now, in, in uh, six and seven, uh, uh, are you rethinking that, or there's no staff, not feasible? Uh, well, as we put this together, we've been working on the things that have earlier due dates. So it's just that they have not been started yet. It's not that we're, you know, planning to push them out. We just have not begun those yet. So do you think that uh, the seven is going to be able to be done by December? Uh, the plan for advertising and. Yeah, that's one of the things, actually, I'm planning on starting, you know, probably this afternoon. I had a meeting last week with uh, folks from uh, Comcast Spotlight. They've got, there's a, a gentleman I'm sure most people have heard of if they watch HGTV or some of the other channels, a guy named Mike Holmes, that has recently done some outreach materials for the uh, board up in Washington State and may be willing to make himself available to do some stuff. So I've had some preliminary talks with them but explain to them in order to do that, we, would, we have a lot of hoops to jump through. When we did advertising campaigns in the past, we had to go through a full request for proposal, getting a contractor on board, an ad agency. Um, when we had money problems, when the state had money problems, the Department of General Services did not allow us to, to actually go out for contract. That's why we haven't had a contract in a number of years. So the first step we'd have to do is find out, will they even entertain the possibility of us doing an any kind of advertising? Yeah. If that's the case, then we would want to develop that. The, RFP, request for proposal process, is probably a six-month process. Yeah. So it would, it would take a while, but uh, yeah, I think we're still going to be able to make the December deadline. Well, that's part of the feasibility, right? Exactly. Yeah. And to answer to some of these questions, I'm just bringing them up here. Yeah. We should know. Hey, Pastor. Yes. Um, I don't know if this should be um, postponed till the next agenda item, but um, it seems to me that I read in this, the Sunset Review report that we did have an ad um, company we were working with ongoing is that just yeah, yeah if there's something in there that says ongoing that's probably an inaccuracy we'll need we'll double check on that yeah I it's been I think it's 2011 ongoing. is when our contract uh, ended with that yeah so yeah. we'll double check copy and make sure that. So that that does not reflect that way but yeah that's the status is not since 2011 Okay. All right, let's go on to the communications plan, uh, Rick, and if you could give us a little background and you bet. where you want to go with this and uh, see how we can uh, imp provide you some input. Uh. Sure. For the committee's benefit is the communications plan differs from our strategic plan. The communications plan, it's very similar to, you know, as you can see, it includes mission statements. It's kind of the 30,000-foot look at not only the public affairs office, but how it fits in with the board as a whole and how we communicate with all of our various different stakeholders, whether it be uh, consumers, our applicants, licensees, building officials, people in the industry, uh, all the different groups we have. And so the last communications plan we had in place was 2011 through 14. So actually I should note to the, the committee, the header at the top of each of the pages actually should say 2014 to, through 2017. We were kind of going back and forth whether we should include 14 twice since the first one was 11 through 14. We decided we would. So just to clear up any confusion, it actually is 2014 through 17 communications plan. For the most part, there's just been a few things that have been updated. This is very similar to the plan that the, the committee and the board approved back in 2011. So I'd like to go through, you get input, and if the committee is comfortable with it, would ask for um, a vote to approve that to go to the full board for uh, their approval at the September board meeting. So on page one, 
it, it starts off with the, you know, the purpose of our office. Item two goes on to the mission statement, which is you know, directly from the board's mission statement, working the communications in. As you can see, the last item, which we bolded here, that's the communications portion of the current CSLB mission statement. The public affairs mission statement has not changed since the last one, but you can kind of you know, see it there. And I'm happy to you know, answer questions. I don't want to you know, slow the meeting down by reading everything, but if you'd like some, some parts that we want to elaborate on, that's, that would be great. On page two, item number four, it goes over and lists the public affairs staff and their key responsibilities and duties. As far as the financial resources, that is traditionally when we had the, the advertising campaign up through 2011, we had allotted, the, the board had allotted $700,000 for that. So for the last few years, th that money has kind of been there, but it hasn't been utilized. So in the past, that's it, and that's what we have available to us should we uh, choose to do or be allowed to do any more advertising. Item number five is the guiding principles that, um, that we use here in PAO and also you know, throughout CSLB as far as communicating. The target audiences are on page three followed by the various communication messages. And these can you know, change or be adapted. We don't really have a, a key message we're using right now for the service and repair outreach. So there, there could be something you know, that we add to this. But again, this is just kind of the wide picture uh, and gives you an idea of the different messages and different uh, audiences. And then you can see at the bottom there the communication channels. M much of our focus is, is being placed right now with we look to relaunch our website, video. The reality-based shows, which I can let the board know, we've actually got contact from two different shows now that are, that are wanting to work with us. One is the one that uh, Catch a Contractor, the one involving Adam Carolla. That show has just been renewed for a second season, so I've had contact with the senior producer for the show. They're actually expanding that show from a half hour to an hour, and right now they're trying to figure out what they're going to do for that second half hour, so there may be some possibilities that they might work with us on some um, some items for the show, so we may get some additional outreach on that, uh, and then you can see the other mess, the uh, the other channels that include some of the, the paid advertising, the media outreach that we do as far as as well as the community outreach. Short-term goals and long-term goals are the next two items. You can see that you know there's some overlap in, in themes for that, but there's some things that, in the short term, we're looking to accomplish. Those are very much more like things you'll see in our strategic plan. As far as the long-term goals, these are the, the, the long-term effects we hope to see as a result of those short-term, you know, succeeding with those short-term goals. Like the first one in the long-term goals is building the awareness with consumers. Back in 2011, when we did finish our ad campaign, we did some research, which was the last you know, communications research that we did with the board, and found out, that I, if memory serves me, I think it was somewhere in the area of maybe 25 percent of the people surveyed had any awareness of, of CSLB and so our, our long-term goals we realize there's lots of consumers out there that don't know if they've had a problem with a contractor they could file a complaint with us they don't know to look to us before they hire a contractor for information so we're trying to build up the awareness and uh, the short-term goals hopefully all lead to that long-term goal of of having more people be aware of us um, then we see the timetable priorities the measurement of success and these can always be added to as well, and these are just some ways that we might be able to measure um, the success of, of the different goals that we've set for ourselves. And that kind of is just an overview of, of the items. I'm happy to, you know, if any if the committee wants to discuss any of it, uh, yes, has I any do. inputs. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, going back to this reality-based TV show, mm -hmm. um, will we have an opportunity to weigh in on that in terms of... Um, what the subject matter might cover. I mean, are we going to try to do something with ongoing campaigns, for instance, the heat and air? Um? They, they seemed very open to it. The, the nice thing about the most recent discussion I've had, it was actually the senior producer of the show, the guy who actually runs the show, and it's the first time we've had contact with them. I, every time we've had any kind of contact with them, we express, even before the show started the area, we expressed some concerns that we had that they said they felt that they addressed. The show aired, we saw some information they were giving out. In one case, they said, never pay more than 50% as a down payment. And we said, well, you know, like other states, that might be okay, but California, it's not. It's really, from a consumer standpoint, that's, that you really, that's really way too much anyway. And so we encouraged them, and they said that they would, you know, they would stop and stop doing that. And they were, they were more than happy to listen, and they wanted to, they, I think they seemed very genuine about wanting to get it right and trying to use that as a, a way to protect consumers. I mean, I'm talking about, are we, are we talking about doing another sting like we did with the last company that 
kind of we those things the, the, before their big concern was when they built this show and tried to get it off the ground is they wanted it to be about them and about the people that they had involved one of the challenges they seem they've had is, is being able to identify cases that they are struggling. And I think that their concern going into the second season, not only identifying cases, you know, when they first came to us and we helped them and, and passed a few cases their way, they had a very small area around Los Angeles, like a 30 mile radius of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Now they've expanded that. They realize, well, maybe if you know, there's not enough cases here, they're going to expand maybe as far as San Diego and Bakersfield. So they're now kind of expanding, trying to figure out, you know, maybe we need to go a little farther to find cases. They're also thinking, okay, now we have an hour-long show to fill. What else? What other elements can we bring to the show besides what we've done in the past? Mm -hmm. So now they're they're willing to talk to us, and, and we're going to have to sit down with our enforcement folks and see right. what might make sense for us that we might be able to play a part in it. Whether as part of their show, maybe we can set up a sting and try to get a person arrested or take some action that way. We can certainly talk to them about service and repair. Right now, everything has had to do with home improvements. Mm -hmm. They may be open to doing some kind of, you know, as, as a witness in that video that we saw in the last meeting, some of the outrageous things and the people that are getting ripped off, they might be willing to expand into the service and repair. We haven't spoken about that yet, but I'm happy to, you know, I'll plan to show them that video and, and to see what they think about it. So there's some opportunities there, and I think they seem more than willing. The other show I've talked with has not actually begun airing it. I have done one interview with them. This one will air on uh, HLN, I'm told, this fall. I haven't gotten a, a, a firm air date yet. Uh, but we, it's going to be a very similar type show with a, you know, their own contract, and, and so far they've, um, and they're doing the same kind of thing with the home remodel. So we haven't had as much contact with them over the last couple of months. Things have picked up a little bit more with the the first show. And we'll try to help both of them however we can because it benefits us to get that message out. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pastor. No, thank you. Do you have any comments? Mm -hmm. uh, just a, and and I. <clears throat> You mentioned that the previous plan had been approved in 2011. Yes. And uh, I don't know if the target audience is, uh, whether you just got kind of uh, cut and pasted that, but you know, under state elected and appointed officials and representatives, I guess at that, I don't know if you got that wording from the 2011. Now it seems that the contractors, well, the board itself is really, have, has expanded its is, is target with elected officials, not only to state, local, and federal. So I don't know if you wanted to decide to make a change in that, because I know some of the uh, senior scam stoppers, we have uh, federal uh, elected officials, you know, being our partners in that. Okay. So that might be more inclusive, uh, local, state, federal, uh, elected officials, and, uh, and appointed officials. And the other one was, uh, Obviously, in, yes, we, we can make that change. Yeah, whatever wording you want, I think just to be more inclusive. Um, in the long-term goals, the last bullet there increased the number of foreign language print. Uh, I don't know if you want to change it to non-English language. Uh, uh, you know, foreign seems like it's foreign, you know. But maybe non-English speaking or limited English or whatever you want okay. to call it, whatever you might say. And as far as measures of success, the only one that you do have measures of success is a senior scam stopper. So I don't know if that uh, you wanted to leave it at two or you want, just want to leave all of them as no numbers at all. I'm, That's up to you. No, no, no I, I would like some input from the, uh, from the committee on how they would like us to, you know, well, is there a goal uh, that you would like for us to set? Mm, well, you know, since you're everyone else, if you want to be consistent, you know, you just leave it, uh, uh, you don't give it a number to uh, senior scam stoppers, and because you do have the the caveat at the bottom that you know the numerical values are going to be uh, you know given at a later date. So whatever you want, if you want to leave the number in, fine, whatever. It's up to you. Whatever your staff wants. <laughs> I'm sure two per month is not going to be a problem. But Amber, what do you think? <laughs> or Jane, she's the one that's doing it. Whether Jane disappears one day, you you're not going to be able well, to do two three months. So maybe, maybe you should, you, whatever you want with that number, it's up to you. So you're not tied into a number, in other words. Okay. Know. Leave it, and then later on you could put, no, there's 10 she'll do each month. <laughs> no, okay. But whatever, you know, just, uh, just uh. any comments from the public here on the plan? Well, I think you have some supporters out there for the plan, Rick. Terrific. And the staff, you know. So, uh, uh, is there a motion to uh, 
to present the plan to the full board. So moved. by committee. Second. There's, okay, there's a, a motion that's been uh, approved. I'm sorry, the motion has been made and seconded by uh, by the committee member. And uh, now I'll call for the vote with the question. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay, say no. Motion passed. So you got it. Thank you. Okay, all yours. Okay, um, the next item is uh, the review of the Sunset Review Report. Yeah, we'd like to clarify one thing. Um, the recommendations at the end of the Sunset Report are recommendations from the board to the uh, legislature. Uh, none of these recommendations are anything new. Uh, the board's discussed this numerous times, these issues numerous times over the years. So again, to stress that this is just to put in the report some of the issues the board think is important to bring to the legislature, putting it on, in a written document so that this board, future boards, this legislature, future legislature, can, they can consider addressing these, these issues. If the board were to want to sponsor a bill, whether it's this bill or, or other legislative proposals, we would utilize the legislative committee. The legislative committee typically meets in November to review the different proposals, and then they make uh, recommendations to the board to see if the board wants to sponsor legislation uh, next year, and then Laura would try and get us authors in January. So, and then the legislative committee would typically meet sometime in the spring when all the bills are introduced to see if they want to take positions on legislation. So I'm just trying to differentiate between what the legislative committee does and what this sunset report is, is all about. The staff isn't recommending in the sunset report that the board uh, sponsor any of these bills uh, next year. That would run on a separate track, the legislative committee to the board, but these are, again, these are all issues that the board has identified as wanting, thinking we should address at some point in time, so we want to put it in this report so it's documented. I just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Yeah, uh, I so think that's... Uh, I do. Go. Oh, go ahead. Um, so, um, we'd have a another committee meeting legislative committee meeting prior to Laura in the spring going to the legislature like we did this year well again so one in November and one in say what, what? March April, March or April April and then as needed depending on what's going on in the in the legislature right so since we didn't have a legislative meeting committee meeting I feel I probably should just address that and I think what we we probably will do today is go ahead and send out a notice um, to those members since there's only one um, here right now as to um, just to consolidate what you're saying and, and uh, your recommendation of when to have the next meeting yeah I thought I had done that a month or two ago do you remember Laura but I'll be glad to resend it. Sure, I'll clarify. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send an email out to the board members letting him know that the committees today didn't have any specific recommendations. They were encouraged to email any future recommendations, edits, whatever, t to me and Cindy, and that we'll be sending out a, a new electronic draft probably uh, at least a couple weeks before the next board meeting. Only the recommendations not the body of work. I don't think you need to crash your computer getting that again. We'll, and we might go through a couple of iterations to fine tune the recommendations so that by the September board meeting, hopefully you can approve the report with the recommendations. And um, that's kind of the recommended plan of action. I'm good is with that. that. Is that uh, that answers my question. Then it's perfect. Well, I, I thank you for clarifying that uh, because there is two different, I guess, this is the, the recommendations that you provided for us as part of the report 
are basically going to be going into the sunset review report. However, if in fact the board decides to move on them, it will be part of the legislative committee. That's correct. And just off the top of my head, speaking today, the only one I would probably recommend the board, uh, I understand it's the board's prerogative, but the only one I would recommend we go forward with next year would probably be elimination of the $2,500 capital requirement, the increase in the surety bond to 15000 and maybe the arbitration program. Uh, it'll take changing the home improvement contract law will take years. Um, 7031, you have to get all your political ducks lined up and review and uh, simplification of the contractor's law will take years. You'll probably have to take that in chunks. So that's my, just my own personal recommendation here at this time based on what I think is going to be in the report. I have a question. Did we actually seek to remove, I mean, obviously we are seeking or proposing that eliminating the $2,500, um, did we vote on that at a board meeting? Uh, no, I don't. Th I don't think so. I know we've been talking about it for so these are a couple just of years. proposals. They're yeah, not going, they're and going the board to will be approve the idea at the board meeting. Um, was and was that something vetted at the last legislative committee? I, I feel like no. I'm not sure I should be even talking about this at this in this venue, which is public affairs rather than the legislative. We're allowing committee. all board members to have input, not just the legislative committee. So okay. all the board members are having. The opportunity and to, so was that to weigh vetted in on. at the last legislative committee member me meeting? W was what vetted? The waiving the um, actual the twenty five hundred dollar. Um, no. So that's well, going to be. Well, it seems like it's something that should be uh, considered by the committee members. And I'm not sure. Do you have a comment? Uh, I do. Laura? Sorry, Laura Zuniga from Legislation. It, it will be a proposal that staff's going to develop and would bring to the um, Legislative Committee meeting that we'll have this fall before the December board meeting. So it is something that will go through the committee process later this year um, before it goes to the full board. It's an idea we okay. talked about at strategic planning, but the Legislative Committee itself has never reviewed the issue. Right. Okay. I'm Sorry. good with that. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's where it should go with the Legislative Committee uh, to deal with that issue. But, but again, the board has to be comfortable with the idea because it's going to be a recommendation in the sunset review report. So that's why you will have the opportunity to weigh, all the board members will have the opportunity to weigh in on it at the September board meeting. And does that not speak for, I mean, is it not the legislative committee that would bring something like that up to the full board at the board meeting? We're well, talking about process. I mean, the... Again, I, my personal feeling is we're trying to get a report submitted. It's all about the report right now. What we do with this, you know, will be up to the board. It's like an action plan. This is like a strategic plan almost. What the board, I mean, the board may or may not decide to carry these bills for any of these ideas forward. But if you, the board doesn't feel comfortable with them, that shouldn't go in the report. I mean, if you want to have a committee meeting, I guess you have, it'll be, you know, a couple minutes, but um, the thought was all the board members are having input, not just the legislative uh, committee members. So it's be up to the to you and past uh, and you and uh, David, I guess. Hey, Kurt, you know. Right. I'm just trying to. So the board is going to, with the concurrence of the board members, the the sunset report will be a product of the board itself going forward to the legislation and in areas recommendations legislative things that would presumably enhance consumer protection. So at that point in time, it will be a product of the board. Every board member then, the September board meeting, will have the opportunity to say uh, yes or no as to whether this the board should even proceed that. Then, in fact, if those recommendations, as I understand it, those recommendations are included, whatever, one through five or one through whatever, whatever make it, then when the board bubbles down, bubbles down to the legislative committee, it will be at that point determined whether to in fact, that becomes an issue that the board wants to take up through board sponsor legislation or perhaps some other entity within you know, the state of California wishes to tackle that legislative issue. 
Is that kind of the way I see it? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, again, the sensor report is just meant to document the issue, to, to put it out there. The legislature can do with it what, what they will. The board can do what the administration, because basically this is a document f between the board, the administration, and the legislature. And, and, and you're right. I mean, you could say, you know, we recommend the legislature look into this, but then you, the, the committee would have to decide, do we want to sponsor this bill? Do we want to sponsor it with this language? Do we want to sponsor it this year? Do we want to sponsor it in conjunction with something else? Does the board want to try and get it included in the omnibus bill or inside the sunset bill? There's all sorts of different tactical decisions we'll have to make over the next year. But again, this is just to get the conceptual support of the board members regarding regarding these issues. And uh, that, again, it's the report versus board legislative activity. I'm trying to draw the line in, the, in between. And you're, you're, you're indicating there's an advantage of um, putting these concepts, these proposals forward before we ever support it on the committee level. You, just to get it in the <coughs> so-called minutes of this uh, proposed um, sunset. Well, again, that's, that's a process question. This was discussed as strategic planning. We've been discussing it for a couple of years. I sent a lot of emails out right. about it. I tried to get industry support on it. Um, I just think the, the time is right. If, if we're going to simplify the law to get rid of outdated regulations and processes, to me, this is low-hanging fruit. It it's, takes up room on our application. It takes up room on our renewal. We never inspect. We never check. It provides no consumer protection, you know, whatsoever. Or you're, you're talking about the specific. That specific. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, in general, all three is what I, I mean, if we have not. Okay, it'll probably. Well, again, these are all issues that the board has already weighed in on. Through, through sunset review, I mean through strategic planning. You know, we've already decided that we want to change 7031. We already want to simplify the law. I mean, those are already board policies. I, I wasn't in the legislate on the legislative committee last year, so I don't remember if it went before the legislature. It went committee. before the board, strategic planning. Mm -hmm. I mean, 7031 went through the, the legislative committee, but again, this is a product of the board. Right. It's like the law takes precedence over board policy. The board takes precedence over committees. So since there's only one other ledge committee member here, Bob Lamb, um, would you mind making this explanation available to the other committee members um, as a, or Laura perhaps, you know, send out, I, uh, rather than my having to hear from one of the committee members that they would like to have a uh, committee meeting before the next board meeting. Yeah, as I, as I indicated earlier, I'm going to go back and email all the board, summarize what happened at the meeting, and differentiate between what the ledge committee is going to be doing. I think I think that'd be really helpful yeah. Yeah. for me. And, and I think it's also that the issues presented as part of these recommendations have been discussed at previous board meetings, because that that uh, I mean I think that gives the recommendations an additional reason why they're part of the Sunset Review Board, I mean, report, because they have been discussed in previous board meetings. And, and I would argue we're, we are, this is staff's attempt to carry out the board's strategic planning objectives. Now we're figuring out how to do it is kind of what we're trying to figure out. So if you do send the clarification memo to all board members, I think that would definitely help. Any other comments or questions? Any other comments or questions from the uh, public? Well, I then move that we adjourn the Public Affairs Committee. Second. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. We didn't vote. Rick is going to give us a demonstration on the website. Go for it. Yeah, for the committee members, we did uh, a brief demo at the board meeting in June, that we, the joint meeting we had with the Nevada board. So some of this you're, you're going to have seen before. We're very close to launching. We expect to have the site launched, we're hoping, by the end of the month.
but we wanted to let you know, give you a status update, just take a few, a couple things. We do have Keith Kuhn, one of the developers, Raju is here, Cindy's here. So we have some people in case you have any questions, uh, especially Bob, I know you're on the technical end, but they can answer those better than I can. But we've already had the site out and it's available for our staff to review. So uh, we've gotten some comeback. Keith, if you want to just go through a couple things while I kind of talk about it. We did get some good feedback from our, uh, some, some, some staff on our biggest issues have been with navigation and some of the biggest change we've had. And overall, actually, I'm going to read a couple of the uh, um, feedback things that, that, the, that we got from staff here who've had a time to test drive. It says they really like the new website. I was actually able to use this one. I like the part about the application process, experience requirements. Um, the new website's simple, pleasant appearance and appears to work well. Like They like the fresh look, the ease of moving about. Looks easier to navigate and locate topics in the sections that are needed. So, so we're getting some good feedback, some very specific things which have been great. Nothing like this is horrible. They're at, there's, they've gotten some suggestions like some call center staff, certain things that they refer to a lot. They're asking us to, to make it a little easier for them to find and direct consumers to find, so we'll take those into account. But some of the main things, I'm not sure, okay, so there's the home page that you're looking at right now. Where's Steve? Steve is still there. He's, actually, he's not. Actually, we needed, uh, well, sorry, Steve. <laughs> I, uh, Keith can address that. Uh, Keith? <laughs> So in order to cut down on some of those comments, we snipped part of the DCA's homepage and, and put that up there. And I believe Melanie from Public Affairs is working or, or I'm working with DCA on getting the new Steve Banner. It's a coup, we instigate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so basically it's, it was kind of a placeholder. That, that'll be fixed definitely before the launch, but because the DCA directorship just turned over about, what, three weeks or a month or so ago, we just don't have the new graphic there yet. You can see some of the web at the bottom, the, the social um, pages, you can go directly to those. One of our challenges is we, since we had to fall into the state template, if you go up to the, back up to the top, is you can see that as across the top, the consumer contractor online services, we're not able to put up everything that somebody might become. So example, you have the building officials come to us. We couldn't put a building official up, which was on the old website. So you can see we've created kind of the different things. So one of the first things that we're asking people to do is kind of self-identify themselves because it'll help drive them off that home page to where they actually need to go. The license, the license. Yeah, the instant license check, so you'll be able to do the license check without, right now it's only one click to get to the license check. We're actually putting it on the home page now and if you happen to be looking for something that is not a contractor, it'll just be one click and then you go off to looking up by name or by a business name or a personal name. And this is just an I idea. Well, some of the stuff, part of the thing is, is this is not out in a public thing, so we've had to create some pages that would, that would come up. So we, you know, it's, it's like you saw me take the test in the licensing uh, demonstration earlier. Right? <laughs> Down towards the bottom, you can see you have the what's new, industry news, and consumer news. You, if you, you know, click on those, they go to different things. Our web, our press releases, you've got our industry bulletins, other consumer news. And then we're hoping but before the first of the month, we're just, you know, Keith can probably address the, the reasons why, but it has to do with transferring files and the, the data system and, because it's, it's pretty close to ready. So it's a matter of just getting everything to the data center and up on a public, the public site. And then you can see on, on the right side of every page, we'll have inside the popular pages. And we've, we can customize those to whatever page. If you're on a consumer page, if you're looking up information about, you know, mechanics liens, we'll have other things that might be of interest to you if you're looking at a mechanics lien page. So those things will change on, on every one of the pages. The other interesting thing that you see there, which we're adding, we thought that was some really good information here, the statistical information that we're gonna be updating in different parts of the website, uh, if it applies to it. So IT has been great about setting up a system to get us some different stats that we'll be able to kind of promote some of the hard work that's being done behind the scenes. And here, as you'll see where it says consumers, building officials, public works, if you click on that, it opens up in, into those areas. So. So it's a, a much cleaner look. The other great thing about, which is one of the, the, the huge keys, if you go down to the bottom of the page, we actually, there's a Google translation. So although it's not a perfect translation, you could go and you could click on a language and so you can select a language that you want to do the site and it'll, there you go. So, 
And so it does that. It's, like I said, it's not a perfect site, a perfect translation, but it's going to be pretty close, and it's going to give them some, some good information that we haven't been able to do in the past. The other huge thing is this thing is going to be optimized so you can look out on any device. In the past, our mobile site has been very limited to just a, a few features, but now the entire site, uh, you'll be able to look at it on your tablets, you'll be able to look at it on your, on your cell phones, and everything automatically will get oh, changed to make it optimize, optimized. Yeah. And we can control, and Keith, you might want to chime in on this, we can control how it appears on a, t a tablet or phone as well. So we can find the most important things off that page and make sure those come up high. It's always the, the whole format. Keith, do you have anything to add about the, as far as the mobile phones or how things change? I covered it okay, okay. Um, Looks like it works well, too. It's scaled right. Yeah. And one of the other things is the, the pages, the landing page isn't finished yet, but we do, one of the things that it's going to be, no, one of the most excited about is our, uh, is our online services, because it's going to be a one-stop shop. Right now it's still kind of developed, it's text, but we're going to have, you know, lots of graphics yeah, on that, and, and it's going to be great for people, especially on tablets and mobile with the touch screens. Um, so it's going to be a little bit easier to use, but um, we're happy about how it's progressing. We've got a lot of support and a lot of good feedback, so uh, we're happy to share more or answer questions, but if, if not, we'll look forward to you being able to take it out for a drive in a couple of weeks. That looks great. Great. Okay. That concludes the presentation unless anybody wants to see something specifically or has any questions. Any questions? Comments? Uh, are you going to show it to the full board uh, in September? Oops, sorry, if you'd like it. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. It would be on. Right, right, the right one, the thank right you. Right. The one that says talk on it, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if the, the committee would like us, I'm, you know, I'm sure we, yeah, can, we, we can make that available. I think we can, because be, it will be on there, right? It better be. If not, we're blaming Amber. <laughs> no, it, I, I think it's Keith, we're confident it'll be on before the board meeting in mid-September. Well, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Did you have a question? Uh, no? Okay. Uh, before I make my next statement, is there anything else that I need to no, I think we've got to cover? Okay, here we go. Well, I thank you very much, and uh, I move that we uh, adjourn the public affairs meeting at one twelve forty two.